Well, in this video, I want to talk a little bit about um, specificity of rhythms, uh, brain stimulation, um, increasing cognitive function using listening to drumming rhythms. You know, as you may know by now, if you've watched any of my videos at all, that I've been exploring this for, for 30 years, really looking at what's going on with the brain and behavior or listening to drumming. Um, and we've done a lot of EEG research over the years looking at what's going on in the brain as someone listens to different drumming patterns. And um, so there, there's a couple things to, to be looking at. I've got a couple other videos showing some EEG activity of people listening to some of my music. Um, and I wanna you know, just say that it's not just my music that'll do this, it's drumming in general. And if you, as long as you follow a certain kind of rules about how brainwave entrainment works. So um, kind of start this video off kind of giving you a foundation of what this is all about. Brainwave entrainment is fairly simple. The idea here is that the brain waves, which uh, pulsate in a rhythm, uh, and brainwave, act brainwave activity is kind of in, almost in the spectrum of, of the musical tempos. Uh, those rhythms, those pulsations will, will, will synchronize to auditory rhythms um, over time with certain, with certain parameters, certain rules. Um, so for instance, if I play a traditional shamanic drumming beat, which is four beats per second, sounds like this. Eventually, the brain wave patterns will match that, and you'll see them spiking at that same tempo, and it'll be directly synchronized. That's brain wave entrainment. Um, if I go faster, the brain goes faster. And so the idea here, then, is to be able to understand uh, what tempo you want the brain to go into, and then to be able to follow whatever parameters you need to follow with the drumming in order to make that happen. But this is just part of what can be done here, and uh, the point of this video is to go beyond this and say, is there more that can happen with the drumming um, in a controlled way. In other words, can we predictably, repeatedly do something different with the brain beyond just entrainment? And the answer to that is yes. We can stimulate the brain, we can create gamma activity, which is the high frequencies, uh, 30 to 100 hertz. Gamma happens when, when higher cognitive function is going on. And you'll also see gamma uh, with high level meditators, people who can, can get in the deepest level of theta that four beat per second shamanic state, for instance, they can also get some gamma activity happening. But we can induce gamma as well through complexity. So this image here shows gamma activity. On the right side, you're gonna see a divergence of activity. You're also on the head plot below, gonna see changes in color in different parts of the brain. This is gamma activity related to the complexity of the drumming rhythms. So for instance, just to, to give you an example, um, if I play, uh, eight beats per second, uh, kind of predictable variability, say, say like this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a variation of a samba and a mambo rhythm, and it'll sound like this. It's variable, it's fairly predictable, it's in 4-4 time, you could attach your foot to it, you, you, could, you could feel the bass drum, you know, the bass tones on ones and things like that. It, it fa feels fairly musical. That's going to create that entrainment effect. In order to get this, this gamma activity and this variability that's going on, we need to add a little bit more complexity and that would sound like this. So I'm not playing in 4-4 time anymore. There's no, there's no themes that are being, that being repeated and kind of built upon. It's, it's almost a random, more random kind of approach. What the brain is doing at that point is trying to figure out what the pattern is. And, and, and working to try to decipher those patterns, that's where you get some of the gamma activity. To take it a step further, um, this goes back to the earliest uh, studies I did on drumming. And what we found was that, that certain rhythms had certain responses. And I have a video that shows a rhythm that stops this behavior, a, a, a kind of a repetitive motion in people with autism. Rhythm sounds like this. rhythms in 21, 21, 16. Kind of an unusual rhythm, but we noticed that if I played this 
and somebody was doing this, they would stop doing that, and it was almost universal. So that was the start of looking at specificity. So when we had the opportunity to start doing EEG research and look at specificity, we were looking, number one, at just complexity, what you just saw earlier, gamma activity increasing, different parts of the brain lighting up depending on what rhythms were happening. And then we started seeing some really specific correlations. And I'm going to show you a little, little clip here where, where we're looking at um, the bass tone on kind of a pattern that, um, I call this a transition beat. It's, it's, using, it's using some 30 second notes, so notes that are going by at um, 16 beats per second. And it, it's designed to kind of create a transition between that and some of the more structured patterns. But if you look, take a look here, and I'll turn the volume up on this, you can see there will be little spikes here, especially on the second line from the top, the green one there, which is representative of this part of the brain right here, the right parietal lobe. Um, you'll, see, you'll see just these spikes of activity every time I hit the bass tone. And uh, so I'll play that, let you, let you see what this looks like. So that is another level of specificity, that, that we can actually see certain tones of the drum within rhythm hitting certain parts of the brain. And um, so that's kind of what we're seeing with a lot of stuff. And, and, and that's part of where we developed our custom program is to be able to look at very specific responses to very focused rhythms. So um, there's a lot more to learn here. Uh, this kind of gives you an introduction to the fact that, yes, drumming rhythms can induce a gamma activity, even though you could never play that fast. Remember, gamma is 30 hertz to 100 hertz. It's way too fast to play. And if you tried to, to, to create it in a computer, say, you know, MIDI, recorded as MIDI and sped it up or did something like that, it would be unmusical at that point. It would almost sound like a tone. It would be going by so quickly. So you can't get gamma entrainment with drumming, but you can get gamma activity with the complexity of the drumming rhythms. That's really powerful. So if you're, if you're interested in doing that when you're playing yourself, play really super unpredictable rhythms. Stay out of 4-4 four, four time. Uh, play in a way that you're not repeating it, and it's constantly evolving. That's going to get the brain to start trying to figure it out. It won't figure it out. And you have to be playing, by the way, at least 8 beats per second, ideally closer to 10, 11, 12 beats per second in order for this to really happen. Um, and then there's the specificity of the rhythms, something that I cover a lot in my drum healing course and my drumming the chakras and acupuncture meridian drumming courses where I show you very specific rhythms to do very specific things. But um, if you're interested in that, definitely check out the link below. But uh, this is pretty exciting stuff because we're looking at very clear responses and very consistent responses to, to drumming. And I think that's pretty cool. So I'll see you in the next video.